So hey, here we are, working on the uh, shield animation. It's kind of nice how it uh, sort of comes in. It's this energetic shield sci-fi thing that, um, yeah, I can imagine a sweet sound effect playing when this thing activates, like, you know, some little bit of bass there at the end. Uh, so that's that's neato, right? Having that. And I also got to say, you're locked now to the... Uh, you strafe around when you hold the shield. So I'll need to do some kind of animation for him, like, you know, tiptoeing around, barely moving his feet, shuffling around. This kind of movement. That'll be fun. Um, so this is kind of a work in progress animation. I'm not quite finished with it yet. I'm playing around with different uh, looks for the shield. Here's what it looks like right now. At the end, it's, it looks like this. Um, this green dot will become the color complement to your team color, and the yellow is your team color, so that gets translated, right? So if your team color is pink, it'll translate all this yellow to pink, and then we'll translate this green color to the opposite of pink. But I'm playing around with these like uh, lines through down through the middle, you know, um, and playing around with having a darker back, but it's not quite dark enough in the game, so I'll need to play around with this some more. But some stuff had to be done to the code to get animations to uh, be loopable. I ran into this situation where um, basically for Songbringer, when I did animations, I'd made kind of a, I added a complexity to the animation system that really, uh, really made the whole game a lot more complex than it had to be as, as far as code goes. Um, the mistake I made, I call it a mistake because it just was, you know, it made the code harder to maintain and um, introduced a lot of bugs. So the mistake I made was that um, I added these flags when you, whenever there's animations. In fact, let's open up Songbringer Source real quick. Um, repeat. Yeah, here it is. So every time an animation replayed at all, whenever it started animating uh, some frames for something, it would add this thing called... Um, Oh, uh, it's anim overridable. Basically, there was a flag called anim overridable. Actually, if we go to whatever, I don't need to go into the code and figure out exactly where it was in all these over 100,000 lines of code uh, for Songbringer. But it was this flag called render anim overridable. So every time you animated, it gave you this overridable flag. And then an animation, if it wanted to, it could take away that overridable flag so that an uh, animation can be overridden. So the whole complexity was how a system, how the render system decided what animation to play. In fact, let's see if we can find some of that. I don't know where, the, I don't know where it is. This is, I'm working on a new code base now. Um, so basically I simplified that and I got rid of those flat, those, these complex flags like overridable and input locking based on a render system, things like that. And now we're just down to some simple animations where uh, we just have the current, we decide what, this is what, how it ticks the animation key for the player, right? It says, mm, let's start off with either just the idle or if you have some movement right now or some desired heading for that character, then play the run animation. Um, then it adds on the wraith skin if it, if it has to. If you're charging up the sword, it plays the, ch the sword charge animation. If you're aiming, it plays the aim animation, etc. This all happens every single time you tick the entity for, um, for a player, right? So every single time, so the render system is the thing handling the complexities and the ins and outs of run of animating frames. Whereas in Songbringer's code, because I added those complex flags, um, it meant that other systems like the input system, for example, every time you would use shield or whatever, you would do some complex stuff inside that to play a different animation after a certain amount of time or maybe set some flags differently so that it would all kind of work correctly. So hopefully I can, I, so to today I basically added in some code that does repeating because I didn't need to do any kind of repeat at all before today. Um, because everything was handled by the player. But what I wanted to do was animate that whole shield coming in and then doing its idle. So it does this like, right? It, there's 
two animations happening right there. One is the shield doing its like um, its intro, and then the other is this, which is this one here, right? The shield slowly comes in, and the last one is that it just holds this shield animation right here. So it ne I needed to be able to do a simple way to do that without a whole complex thought system going on like at where the render system is ticking itself and going which animation should I play now I just needed something where as soon as it was done playing on it it started playing shield and so the simple way to do that was basically to to have the idle animation be just this animation where it's holding the shield like that and then the on animation being the 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 uh, exception to the rule, if you will, and it plays only when it starts. So to do that in the code without adding any all those complex stuff that I had in the last game, I basically do this now. I can animate and set a repeat amount, so a repeat count. So I'm setting this to zero. We only want to play this once, and then after that, play the idle animation and repeat it forever. So. Um, that's what it does here in the render system render system shoot where are we at there we go render system it goes and uh, whenever it loops the animation meaning the elapsed amount of time in the animation has gone beyond the duration it subtracts that from the elapsed and then repeats the animation so it decrements the repeat counter and sets this flag called next to nim which means that next time it goes and chooses an animation it will go and play the next to nim which is uh, right here. If we have this next anim anim flag, then we call animate. We basically switch up the animation to the next animation with the next repeat, and then we clear the next anim and repeat, and then we get the current animation and process it, and away goes the loop. So that's how it, um, I'm hoping that by doing it this way, I haven't introduced any complexities that will cause me to make the whole game more, uh, or less maintainable and more bug prone. I'm thinking that I've from I've learned my lesson from Songbringer here and I've done a simpler system here, but I'll need to think about this a little bit, let my subconscious uh, process it a little bit and figure out if maybe there's a simpler way. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.